Okay, we've heard from uh, from healthcare professionals, we've heard from school meal providers, we've heard from leisure and recreation departments in local authorities, we've heard from parents, we've heard from school governors. Now, what's the policy in terms of your thoughts as a school leader, as a curriculum leader, as a, as a head teacher, about the need to promote healthy lifestyle and in particular healthy eating? I think there's two elements. If I start with the children and the curriculum first, um, part of our belonging to the Healthy Schools initiative and being a healthy school is to promote healthy living within our, within our school. So children from foundation upwards actually start by looking at their health uh, initially about themselves. And that's really important because children need to know what they need to do to be healthy for themselves. And they do some work in the summer term to complete this. As the children move through the school, we talk a lot about healthy living, healthy uh, lifestyles, and we have at least two hours of PE for all of our children every week. And then alongside that, the curriculum then continues into growing vegetables, recognition of how they feel, they know where their heart is, and the result of doing exercise and what it does to their heart. So throughout their time at our school, we promote healthy living, healthy lifestyle. So that's the element of curriculum. Beyond the curriculum, we've talked earlier that children are given fruit and vegetables every day. Uh, they, they don't have a choice because it comes from government funding. But every day, the children today actually have strawberries, which is the real treat, and we don't often get those. But during the whole year, they have bananas or apples or satsumas, plums, pears, tomatoes, carrots. So all children are exposed to healthy foods. And actually, even those that don't really like it, the initials are not going to eat that. By two or three weeks in, all their friends are eating it, they're eating it as well. We also encourage every child to bring a water bottle to school every day, and they're allowed to go to that water bottle at any time during the school day. And when we say water, we mean tap water. In their lunch boxes, they are not allowed to bring fizzy drinks. They are allowed to bring flavoured water for their lunches. Um, so that's that side of it. We also have healthy uh, diet because our children are allowed or are encouraged to buy school lunches. Those provided by one of the local authority um, providers called Signet, and we buy into that provision. And I think at the moment about um, just over a third, a third to a half of our children now have a healthy lunch every day. Those that don't have hot lunches then have bring lunch boxes, and we do encourage our parents to actually provide healthy lunch boxes. So we give them some support, some guidance, particularly when children first start school, at the elements that could be included. We don't allow sweets. We don't allow um, chocolate other than chocolate biscuits. Um, and children rightly say, and you heard earlier this morning, that chocolate is okay in small amounts. Um, one of the things the school has stopped doing is allowing children to bring sweets for birthday treats. And it sounds sometimes a little bit mean for the children, but actually because we're a healthy school, we actually don't subscribe to sweets as birthday treats. So we suggest to the parents either send a book for the children to read, have a story time, or a DVD, or to send some fruit in. And parents have subscribed to that, or just not sent anything. And that's been a much better take on that. So the school is a healthy school. The governors of the school ensure that we follow the government guidelines and uh, we are checked on a regular basis that we do what we say we do. Uh, and that's really the f school's food policy. Okay, one of the factors I'm sure you have very little control over is um, the state in which children come into school um, in early years. And putting on your black hat, what are the problems that children who perhaps are overweight, obese, or have a poor diet? What are the problems that they have when they come into school that you have to deal with? Well, we are very aware of those children, and we monitor all children's progress every half term. Our school nurse service actually supports us in that, and children are weighed and measured uh, right at the very beginning of their school life with us. Children we're worried about, we can refer back to the school nursing uh, organisation on a regular basis and ask for advice, and we suggest their advice is to the parents. So it's, it's sort of almost not quite taken out of our hands, but we ask them to visit the parents in their own home and actually talk to them about how they can support their children to have a 
better, healthy diet. Um, we didn't talk earlier about that. We have a breakfast club, and that's not actually because children don't eat breakfast. It's actually to support parents who are working, and those breakfasts are healthy breakfasts. Um, and children, we have about 20 children a day that attend that um, facility. Thank you. Thank you very much. You did. <laughs>